Good Friday evening, everybody. Come on in. It's time to get a little bit of dinner going. I decided to cook some food. Have you ever just had the taste of something? It didn't feel like cooking it, but I got such an urge for it. I haven't had fried chicken in a couple, two, three weeks. I used to have it maybe once a week. It's time for fried chicken, and I just couldn't wait till Sunday. So we're going to have some Friday night fried chicken. It's just going to be regular fried. I'm not going to even put my buttermilk back, batter on it this time. I'm just going to straight up old time fried chicken tonight. I'm not going to do it mama style. I'm just going to do it regular style chicken tonight. So here we go. I've got drumsticks. Y'all know that's my favorite part of the chicken to fry up or wings. I just don't happen to have any wings tonight. So we having some drumsticks, just fried drumsticks. I'm not deep frying them. I just like the pan fried still with the half pan of oil in there. That's what I'm doing. So I've already seasoned my chicken drumsticks. I think I put every seasoning in the cabinet on them. Now, the other advantage I had when I cooked on Sunday, I made those, um, those lemon, not lemon pepper, but uh, honey mustard or brown sugar mustard drumsticks in the oven. I guess I must have had about eight or ten left over. I had two big packs, so I kept a few out. So since I had them already seasoned partially, I went ahead and threw some more seasoning on it. I already had uh, onion powder, garlic powder, uh, complete seasoning. Tonight I threw in some of my chicken seasoning that uh, my um, my Asian chicken. I'm sorry, not. Excuse me, Nari. Thank you, darling. I'm taking, okay? Me, me, honey, he over here on one of his little Mario games. He get, He's a gamer. I'm sorry. He, he's just a gamer. He loves to play those games. He gets excited about the game. So him and Kareem are my two gamers in the family. Everybody else plays them, but not as serious as these two. When Kareem was his age, oh, my goodness. Kareem was the Goldsboro Gaming Champion. He won so many games around here, so many championships. When they had a little championship thing going a couple of years ago, honey, they stopped letting him enter the game. So, anywho, I think Norwich is going to be the next gamer. So, maybe one day they'll be able to play against each other. I don't know. But anyway, back to this fried chicken. So, onion powder, garlic powder. Yeah, baby, I hear you. Onion powder. You are going to be a gamer? Oh, I believe you are because you play so well and you get so passionate about it. I believe you're going to be a gamer. You hear him say, yeah, GG, I'm going to be the gamer. So, anywho, again, back to the chicken. So, I've had it. It's been in the freezer. It's been frozen. I pulled it back out. And as you can see, I put some of my uh, chicken seasoning on there. And just to make sure, I'm just going to slosh it around again. I got my chicken seasoning uh, that my, it's that, uh, that from that Indian curry line of seasoning. It is the best, y'all. So I sprinkled some more of that on there. Uh, onion powder, garlic powder, my complete seasoning, and of course, black pepper. And I believe that's it. Because I, I didn't add any extra salt. You know, I'm trying to cut back on the salt. But like I say, with me, I only do this fried food one time a week, even if that much. So, I, ooh, there's a, oh, there's a skin. Okay, what I'm going to do is just put them in here in this bag. It's a bag of flour. I'm not dipping them in the uh, milk this time. And I'm just going to shake them around real good. And I'm praying I can get every last one of them into this one skillet. So, what y'all doing tonight? I tell you what, so much going on in the news. I tell you what, it's kind of keeping folk glued to the TV. I'm telling you. Tell you what. Okay. Get them nice and coated, and these will coat nicely because these are, uh, this chicken has been in the freezer. It had juices, and I'm just letting that juice still be on them. And when it goes on to that flour, flour, uh, the uh, flour soaks up that juice, and it adds adds an extra coating. So that's why I don't need that buttermilk batter on it tonight. So it'll get me a good, nice, crispy, tasty. Uh, crunch on there. Okay. I won't have my hard, hard crunch like I do when I have the buttermilk chicken, but this will do just nicely. 
I just have a taste for fried chicken. I don't even know that I, maybe I just want uh, some fried chicken and a piece of, like they said, a piece of light bread. That's what I got a taste for. And I might do a little green salad because I try to, you know, get my greens in whenever I eat. But tonight, and tonight, is, and tonight, I have declared Friday, uh, well, for the last week or two, I think it has been. Friday and, and always on Saturday, I declared a no cook time. So, yeah, nice and coated. Got that one, that first one out of there. It's nice and coated. And I'm going to start laying them over here in this grease. Remember, when you're frying chicken and you want it hot, but you don't want it too hot. Okay? Is that pan? No, it's not in the way. I believe I can get, I think I got probably eight. And look, Norik and I have been snacking. He's a snacker. He's not an eater. He's a snacker. We've been snacking on chips and crackers. And his grandma Tansy brought him a cheese pizza. Now, he'll eat a cheese pizza right now. He ate his cheese pizza. Try to get him to eat a little salad. I don't think he ate any of that salad. But anyway, as long as he eats something, honey, I'm good to go. And of course, he loves lemonade. And he loves to drink ice water, too. You heard them get these so they can all get done at the same time, y'all. So what have y'all been doing on this beautiful Friday? I've been in, I'm, because I need to rest off of my back, I have been in all day. I went out yesterday. I had a couple of doctor's appointments, so I decided today I'm staying in here. I'm going to stay in. That's what I've done. I've stayed in all day long. I went out one time. I was doing Norik. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I told y'all. Share with y'all. Norik is in his pre K studies these days. So when he comes over with me a day or two of the week, I help with his studies. Honey, if that don't take you back, baby. But I guess the the saving grace in that was, you know, he's uh, he's not seated. He's getting his lesson online, and he is doing well, y'all. But it's still a challenge to work with these little ones. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Now, I ain't trying to pretend like it's easy breezy and a piece of cake. If you know you those little ones, you have to keep their attention. But he is doing very well, thank God, for his sake especially. Because I want him to learn. I was, I, you know, I just kept trying to figure out what are we going to do with this little baby. Uh, Kylie isn't here yet. What are, it, Kylie is almost four. She'll be four in January. So, you know, if, if it rolls over till she gets four, she'll be okay. But Norik definitely needed to be uh, receiving some formal instruction. So now he is getting his formal instruction between myself, his mom, and his daddy. So we are working with him and praying as we go along, of course. Lord Jesus, when you work with these little ones, they just about as old as old teenagers. They think they already know everything. Tell me, these kids are something else. So, but you know me, honey, I get them right in the, in the right groove. I get them where he needs to be, so. You know what? I got three too many. There are too many in here. Ah, six. I put some coconut oil in there. That's why that oil looks foamy. I just, y'all know me. I just wanted to try something different. I've never really tried with coconut oil. I've, I've, I mean, I have, but you know, I'm not with regularity because I, I don't. I guess I didn't like the foaminess, so I almost forgot it from. Me. So all these are going in there, honey. And I'm going to cover this chicken for a minute or two or five so that it can cook so i can make sure it cooks all the way through to the bone okay and then i will take the heat off i mean inside the lid off and let it uh do the crisping what do y'all think y'all think i'm gonna get them all in there without it being too crowded i can see through the phone there's space i know for this one these are some good size drums, y'all. So what are you, Norik? What are you talking about, baby? You're excited over it. I can tell. 
Something's going on. What's what you excited about? Mm. You trying to get the game? Okay. You try oh, he's trying to beat the game. Now his daddy just bought that game for him yesterday, honey. He no, the Oh, I'm sorry, he's correct. He said no, the T he he called it. Oh <laughs> Goodness. Okay. I was, I was gonna say it. Yeah, you have okay, you weren't gonna say it. I had to get him the other day and he oh said, Oh my oh god. My and I told him, No, it's oh my goodness. So he just started to say it again. And, then he, and I told him, he said, Jimmy, I wasn't going to say it. But he cut himself short anyway. About this tooth thing. He lost his first, I don't know if y'all share with y'all, he lost his first little teeth about um, a month ago almost now. And so when he lost them, of course, you know, the tooth fairy deal. So he got into the tooth fairy thing. And... <laughs> when he came over here one day, I told y'all about he knocked his own tooth out because he just, he could not take it. It was just getting to him that that tooth was wiggling. He says it's wiggling too much, Gigi. It's, it's just wiggling too much. I said okay. So when he comes back again, the, I did get all his legs in there, honey. You know I'm determined. We'll work with whatever they're gonna do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cover. And let him cook. So anyway, when he came back in the next week or so, the tooth was out from the first time he told him it was so wiggly. So I asked him how to get it out. Who pulled it? That's what I asked. He said, I did. I did myself. I said, really? And he showed me how he punched his tooth out in the bottom. I thought, Jesus help. So I guess his daddy must have told him about the tooth fairy and all that and how you get money under your... A pillow for the tooth. Well, his daddy gave him a game. Yes, darling. Yes, darling. He said, Oh my goodness. He said, Oh my goodness. That's what I told you. He heard somebody else say, Oh my goodness. That's exactly right. That's what you say. Oh my goodness. Very good. You listen well. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. I love you. You're such a big boy and handsome too. I'm so proud of you. So, anyway, we're on this tooth fairy kick. So, his daddy gets him a game. One, I forget what game, but anyway. The next two. So he got a second one a couple weeks ago that got loose in his mouth. And he showed it. He said, got another one, Gigi. I said, ooh, really? It, it really was not ready to come out. I said, no, Rick, it's not ready yet. He looked at me like, oh, yeah, but I'm going to get it out. So, no, Rick, who pulled your other two? Who got that tooth? Who pulled that one? This one's so cute. Yeah, the first one. I know you pulled the first this, one. Who pulled the other one? This one. Yeah. Oh, my mom. Your mom. He okay. Just spin it around. Okay, she spin. He just do like this. Okay, good. He's, she, he said his mom. He showed me. She said she just spin it around. So his mom got the second tooth. So now the expectation is a game every time those teeth uh, drop out. So, honey. He calls it, and because he had that little space between his mouth, so we had we asked him, "Well, where did you get all that money to buy the game?" He said, "The food fairy." What is it called, now, Rick? The food fairy. That? Yeah. Who, who gave you your money for your teeth? Um, uh, the teeth fairy. The teeth fairy. So we got we kept pressing, pressing, and now we say, "The tooth." Fairy. So, bless his Lord. Kids say the cutest little thing. So, a while ago, he said, uh, he heard me talking about his game, about who gave him the game. He said, No, the food fairy. <laughs> so funny to me. I love it. Kids are so funny. They say the darn, like, remember that little show? Children say the darnest things, and they do. Sometimes the darnest thing that they don't need to say, but. Anyway, you know I love my babies, honey. They crack me up and keep me going. But anyway, got that chicken in the pan. It is going to have to fry approximately 25 minutes. Um, so it's been frying now for about, I'll say, a good 10 minutes. Uh, maybe 8 minutes to be exact. 
So I'm going to fry it up. I'm not decided yet if I'm going to do any size of this. This just might be Friday night uh, fried chicken. And we might do, well, of course, we'll have a beverage. And Kareem is here, so he's in on tonight. And then Norik is here. So we might just eat fried chicken. What you, are you going to eat some fried chicken, Norik? No. No, you don't like fried chicken? Oh, he said he don't like Happy Meal. <laughs> I know you like to eat. Ooh, now, now see what happens when you play too around with stuff too much. Now bring that here. The the remote dropped out of his hand and all the batteries flew out. Let let Gigi see. I just trying to do like this. Okay, let me show you how next time. Look, look. Whenever it falls again, let me show you. How. You have to use accidents with children. It's teaching mom. They keep you from fussing. Come here, let, let Gigi show you uh, how to put the batteries back. Come on. Okay, get, huh? Wait a second, I said I the remote. What's your remote you looking for now? The tiny one? Here, you got, I've got it right here. Boy, don't get mad at me. You forgot that quick you had it. <laughs> don't let get like Gigi forget where you put stuff as soon as you put it down. Come here, let me show you, boy. Come here with all that energy. Whew, geez, you make me tired moving. Come here, darling. Sugar. Look, but like I say, anytime an accident happen, happens with a child versus fussing, go ahead and teach them what should have been done. Okay, look at me. You see this part, this part, that little part sticking out there? It goes, see, it goes right down there. Shh, shh, stop being so loud. Stop being, what I tell you about being so uh -uh. Put it in this way first. Look. Put it in like this first. And then press it in. Put the other one in. Look. You're not watching me. You're not watching me. Come here. I want to be able to tell your dad you fixed it. Okay? You're going to tell your dad you fixed it. You dropped it. You, you didn't break it. It just came apart. And you fixed it back. Look. Here's how you put it back. You put it back on like this. Now smash it down right there. Smash it. Smash it. To it, say, make it uh -oh, now push it down right there. Push it down. Oh, you gotta push it at the top. Push it, push it down right there. You're at quick. That no, man's no, quick. No, 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 Whatever you tell children in a way that they can't, they may not really fully understand it right then, they would hear it and know it, but whatever, whatever things you pour into them that they know at the appropriate time, they will come to understand it. Okay. What is that? What's that? Oh. Okay. Very good. You're good. And you have to give praise and honor for whatever they do when they do positive stuff and correct them when they do negative stuff. Not fuss, holler, and scream. You might have the urge because God knows I have gone through that enough times in my life to know it doesn't do any good. And at times now, even when I feel the urge, I have to fight it right back down and say, no, that's not how you do it, Peggy. You've got to be patient with little ones in order for them to be able to do the things that we expect them to do when they become adults. The Word of God says, train up a child. And when He asked us to train them up, He meant for us to train them up in a good, positive way. Not screaming, hollering, letting them see and hear us do in and everything. Train up a child. And you have to, you know, you, you have to get that whatever means of discipline. You have to do the discipline too. But we still have to let that child know that we love, respect. We have to respect children. You know, a lot of people don't even respect their children because they feel like I'm the adult. They're the child. That that old harsh stuff. You have to respect children just like you respect adults. Now, you don't necessarily um, communicate with children like you do with adults, but you certainly have to respect them. You don't bully and talk and call them all out of their name and all that kind of care. No, no, you don't do that. Well, I know some people do that to adults too, but I'm just, we talking about the right way to do this thing and how we get our children grown up and being um, real good people. 
great citizens in this world. So that's what uh, I'm working on and have always tried to work on. Did, did I uh, do some things that I shouldn't have done when I was raising my kids? Sure I did. Things I look back and said, boy, I should have did this, that, and the third. That time has passed now, but I can guarantee you I didn't do it a whole lot. That's, that's not no brag. That's just the truth. And try, and you know, the word of God, again, says do good and do right as often as possible. And that's what I've always lived by because I know what it feels like to get your feelings hurt and not to be treated well. So I would never want to treat anybody else any other way but well or good. So uh, I don't know how I got there, but anyway, I'm there. Uh, and whoever that was for, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt and apply it to whatever's going on in your life or not. Um, but that was just on me, on my heart to say, you know, we have to always be mindful of people's feelings in general, and especially the little ones, because they cannot uh, process, they, and, and they not cannot, but they do not process things like we do. They, they don't usually retaliate with words. You know, most kids fear their parents enough not to talk back so don't even put that in their spirit to want to do that because I, I love my little ones and you know of course i have to now i have to jack them every once in a while because i tell no reason to if you don't get someone and sit down shoot uh Gigi gonna have to go out there to the tree and get me a little switch i always had to have a little switch for him and we'll get them little fat legs too to let him know now come on now back to the word again you know you have to train up a child and you know and that saying that goes, spatteroids for the child, hmm. thy rod and thy staff, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So we have to put that thing into perspective, y'all, and uh, keep it moving. Let's see what that chicken doing with that olive oil and that, uh, I got a mixture of olive oil and um, coconut oil in that skillet. So that chicken ought to be some kind of good, y'all, with some hot sauce on it. And I've got me some of that good old soft, um, that bread, that real good, that crafted, uh, crafted bread, that real thick bread. Get me a slice of that and uh, one of those drumsticks and probably a salad. I just love a salad with a meal. But anyway, this is one of those quick, easy, not a whole lot of sides meals to it. Tomorrow I won't be cooking at all. Um, hope you all have been having a God-blessed week. It got here so fast, the end of the week got here so fast that I, when, when I realized, we well, always know my trash pickup is on Friday, and I'm like, oh, Lord, it's Friday again. So anyway, hope you all will continue to pray without ceasing, and hope you all are standing in the gap and making life easier for somebody that you know or, or somebody that you don't know. A kind word, a prayer whatever it takes. I've had so many good things happen to me last week, and I've had some not necessarily negative things. Well, yeah, one or two little things, but they weren't necessarily, they were more disappointments than anything else, dealing with people doing work that I paid them to do, and didn't quite turn out. When I get to the end of one of them, one in particular, I will share with you, but you know, it seems like just as that happened, in a negative way and I felt taken advantage of and disrespected. The Lord sent someone right behind them to restore me in that area because I'm real big on, on respect and doing right and being able to trust people. When you pay somebody to do a job, you trust them to do it and when they don't and then they try to make you feel like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, that kind of thing. And then I try, and then I have to hold back to not to get too upset about it. Because I don't want to. I don't like that feeling. Then the very next day, on one uh, person came and did something for me. I paid them what they asked me to pay. They did a very good job. And they charged me such a good price, I was flabbergasted. And I thought to myself, now I'm not surprised because I prayed and asked the Lord that whenever I encounter people and engage people to do things for me, I try to pray about it first anyway and say, Lord, help me to be able to pick the right people and that people will come to me and look at me as a person that, yeah, we're going to do right by you. I'm just going to have enough integrity to do this job by anybody. 
And when that doesn't happen, I, I'm telling you, I really feel insulted. I think to me it's an insult. If I pay you to do a job and you have to do it, and I have to correct you because I don't like correcting people like that. Oh yeah, I feel really insulted. So, but God sent uh, a gentleman to, to fix my roof and did another job for me, fix my porch, he charged me a really reasonable price. And I was just excited about it. And I got another estimate of some more work that I'm getting ready to do some painting. And I can get ready to do some painting in my kitchen and talk to that young man. And he was so accommodating. Now the work hasn't happened yet, but he assured me of how he was going to do the work and just talk to me about, you know, some things that I felt so good and so restored. And I thank God that he does that. He always sends, after, seem like after something negative like that, he always sends a breath of fresh air. Because I'm constantly praying, Lord, help me that my latter years will be my better years. I don't have to be dealing with a whole bunch of off-the-wall craziness uh, at 70 years old and chasing folk down to do things for me. And even if I was 20, if I pay you my money, I expect a job like we agreed and not have to chase after you or chastise you into doing a job. So God is good, y'all. That's why we have to continue to pray without ceasing. We have to pray and stay in that prayer mode so that things happen when things do happen, we don't get all bent out of shape and then God can come back and, re, and, and restore like the, the scripture talks about restoring the things that the canker worm ate up. And some things in my life like that, when I pay somebody like that and they don't do it right and try to walk off from it, that's canker worm stuff. That's what I call it. So, I'm just here to say um, God is good, and he's good every day of the week, every hour of the day. He is good. He is gooder than good. And he will answer those prayers, those fervent and effectual prayers. God will answer those prayers on your behalf and on behalf of those that you pray for, because after all, his word said he will perfect those things that concern me. So I believe it to that end, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to go off for a little while, and I'm going to let this chicken continue to fry. And probably the next time you see it, it'll be edible. So y'all hang on, grab you something out the kitchen, order you some chicken, a bunch of chicken. Or if you got some, you can thaw out right quick. Or got some thawed, throw it in a pan of hot grease, flour it up, and you'll have the same thing I want to eat this evening. So y'all hang on a minute. And okay, y'all, here are my beans. I took them out of the microwave. They are the bird's eye steam in the bag bean. I just sauteed some onions and put in there. Sprinkle a little bit of uh, garlic powder, a little onion powder, some complete seasoning, and you got yourself a side dish. Remember, I wasn't going to do one. But I got a side dish to go along with that good old crispy fried chicken, y'all. I want to thank y'all for hanging out. Short though it was, this meal is done. Yeah. Now remember, y'all keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Keep on praying without ceasing so people will continue to be blessed. Thank y'all. Love y'all. I think I talked more than I intended to tonight, but you know, I think I got on my little soapbox. So thank y'all for tuning in. Love you guys so much. And until I cook again, right. keep those prayers going up until the blessings continue to come down. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Toodaloo.